This is former All Pro Dolphin Lyman Richmond Webb, and you're listening to The Grueling Truth. All right, welcome everybody to another edition of the Grueling Truths Tuesday Night Boxing Show, brought to you by Gridiron Mo, a new interactive football app where you get to call what you think the offense or defense should do during a live NFL game and to see what all other fans have called. Check out Gridiron Mo at www.gridironmo.com. As always, I'm your host, Mike Goodpaster, and I would like to welcome in my co-host from Ringside Report, Dave Sidersky. How you doing tonight, Dave? I'm doing great. How you doing, Mike? All right, we got a special guest tonight. Our guest tonight is the former WBC lightweight champion of the world and was just recently elected to the Illinois Boxing Hall of Fame. Help me welcome to the grueling truth, David Diaz. How you doing, David? Not bad, not bad. Can't complain. I'm uh, feeling really um, uh, humbled uh, for for that nomination, and um, you know, it's uh, something uh, that we we're getting recognized here in our hometown for it. So it's awesome. Yeah, that always makes it more special when it's in your own hometown. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you talk about your hometown. You grew up in Chicago. Tell us exactly when you started boxing and what you really loved about the sport. Well, I started boxing at a very tender age of eight years old. Um, I, I enjoyed the sport so much that, that I, I, I just loved fighting and loved working out. And to be honest with you, love going on those trips, you know, because uh, – you were able to stay at hotels, get per diem, eat, come back home from a trip with the money, and the best thing about it was that you came back home with the uh, with the victory, and that that really helped out a lot. <laughs> Hi, David. Um, you had a very decorated um, and impressive amateur career. Could you um, tell our listeners a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I w- I've been. Well, here in the city of Chicago, we uh, I, I started boxing um, in um, in the Chicago Park Districts, which is you know a, a free program that they still have here in in the city for of uh, Chicago for the kids that that want to box. Um, if you want to box, it's absolutely free uh, up until the age of 18, I believe it is now. But back then, it was it was free for everybody when I first started, and it was the the most uh, the the sport that that my dad didn't have to come out a, a lot of his pocket, so I couldn't do football, I couldn't do baseball, I couldn't do uh, karate or anything else. So boxing was was the next thing, and, and I loved it. I fell in love with it. Um, ended up uh, right away fighting um, after my my first month of training in there in, in the gym. I ended up having my first fight, and um, I ended up actually losing my first fight which um, actually uh, drove me more to to want to to want to win my my next one and hopefully eventually um, um, end up fighting that same guy that beat me again and and you know um, beat him and that's what it was it was just a will to to train hard and to work out and, and I loved fighting I enjoy I enjoyed it a lot and we ended up fighting uh, for such a long time as amateur. Um, we won like numerous Chicago Park District championships. After that, we uh, ended up uh, fighting in the states, uh, and then the regions, and then the national tournaments. When I was 15 years old, I won the Junior Olympic Nationals, and it was like my first trip to go represent the U.S. Um, and we actually ended up going to Ireland for that, and that's where my Olympic dream began. I uh, I started uh, saying, you know what, this would be an awesome an awesome thing to, to, to represent the U.S., but it will be awesome if it's, like, in somewhere like in London, Paris, or somewhere like that. And, you know, little did I know, I didn't realize that um, four years later I would be in Atlanta, you know. <laughs> it was just down the street from where, from Illinois. I could be there in nine hours. And um, But the, the most important part about that journey was that my parents – at that time, were not able to leave the country because they were not documented um, to be able to travel. So um, it was kind of easier for them to come to to Atlanta than to go out of the country to go watch me fight. So it was it was 
it was awesome because a lot of my family and friends were able to see me um, participate in the Olympics. Hey, probably, as you just said, the highlight of your amateur career was probably, at least from what I looked at, outside of just fighting in the Olympics, was when you upset former world ch- future world champion J- Zab Judah in the 1996 Olympic trials. Can you tell us a little bit about the 96 trials and what you remember about that night? Well, I mean, um, it, it was actually an awesome, awesome tournament. Um, we knew we were going to end up meeting each other. I had previously uh, fought Zab Judah in uh, a couple of months before that in the PAL Nationals. And um, we ended up going to, to the finals, and uh, he ended up beating me. Uh, I don't remember what the score was, but he ended up getting the decision over me in the PAL Nationals to end up eventually going into the Olympic trials. So, you know, that was one of the, the ways that we were trying to get into the Olympic trials. So we ended up doing the Golden Gloves, which was the, the last tournament to try to get in. I ended up winning that tournament, so we ended up meeting in the Olympic trials. And I won all of my fights. He, I believe he ended up losing in one of his matches. So he was in the what they called the loser's bracket. And we ended up meeting up in, 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 in the finals uh, uh, of, that, of that tournament. And um, I believe I was down in the last round because they, they told me, <laughs> you know, they were like, hey, you're down, you're not, you're not winning this fight, you got to go out there and, and, and take it to them. And that's what we did. We gave our, our best effort and threw out there a lot of punches, and we ended up winning the, the victory and getting the David, victory and the nod to, to Augusta. David, um, I have a quick follow-up question. Um, what are your memories about competing in the uh, 1996 Olympics? They're awesome. I mean, I had a great time. Uh, I, I was my my goal as as uh, I I I just wanted to represent the U.S. Um, in, in the Olympics. That was my dream. Um, I ended up uh, losing to Octay Urko, the, which won the silver medal, which was a kind of like a, you know, I I don't know. I just think we all got robbed that year, man. Uh, <laughs> our fights. Uh, we ended up just not getting the, the, the points that we were supposed to get in, in the fights. You go over them fights over and over, and Floyd definitely should have won. Fernando should have won. Myself, I think I should have won. Um, and uh, Tarver, I think, was another one who who, who yeah. got, like, got, like, really uh, jammed up. But, you know, it's, it's part of, you know, the amateur experience, and, and we ended up doing it. But it was it was a great time for me. Great moment that that I that I have in my in in my boxing career, which I which I'm very happy for. Well, um, when the Olympics were over, you turned pro. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your pro debut? What you remember about that night? Yeah, that was actually in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I fought under the undercard of Johnny Tapia, and um, it, it was it was it was my first four rounder. So obviously, uh, it was it was pretty cool. I had a great time. Um, um, I'm not going to lie to you, I was nervous. I was very nervous for, for that first pro bout. Um, I had done a little bit of sparring before uh, with a lighter weight guy to try to see um, how the punches felt a, as a pro fighter. Um, and they hurt from a one, one, 112, you know, so I was just like, oh, man. You know, I was fighting at 140, so I'm like, man, this guy's going to hit me hard. But we ended up we ended up winning, but and um, you know it was it was a, a great experience, and um, I I knew that I wanted to become a world champion. Then I was like, yeah, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, and and hopefully one day become a world champ. David, you won your first twenty six straight fights until a loss to Kendall Hall. Did that way that did that loss change the way you approached your career? No, actually it didn't, man, because um, I, I honestly felt I was doing real good in that fight in, in the way um, um, I was fighting. I mean, I always kept my, my, my fighting the same way. Now, what it did make me change was uh, the, weight, the weight division that I was competing in, you know. Um, it, whether it be five more pounds, um, it's a big difference in, in height, not in strength necessarily, but in the the 
the height of the opponents that you end up fighting. Um, Kendall Hogg was obviously taller than I was. Um, everybody is. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, that's, that's what um, it, it, it made me realize, just that if I drop out at least five more pounds, the, the guys will probably be my age, if not just one or two inches taller than myself, and, and it'll probably make it a, a lot easier for me to, to compete and, and win the fights. Had nothing to do with the power or anything like that. It just had to do with the height. Well, after that, you went on another winning streak, and you won, I know, the interim WBC lightweight title. But then it comes to where you fight Eric Morales in your hometown. Eric Morales was an absolute legend. Um, tell us a little bit what it was like to fight a lightweight championship fight in your hometown and to beat a legend like Eric Morales in what was a great fight. Well, I was actually, uh, that was a bucket list or not, yeah, per se, a bucket list or a dream that I had because my first uh, um, time to fight for the Chicago Golden Gloves was actually in that same arena uh, but it was named differently. It was called the Rosemont Horizon before it was the All-State Arena. And what happened is that uh, for that fight at the, um, in the Golden Gloves, I, I told myself coming out, man, because there was a lot of people there, and I was like, man, one day would be awesome to come here to defend the title or to win a title in, in my whole town. So I was really... Um, happy that I was able to do that in, in Chicago and against a great legend like Gary Morales. And the way the fight went, I think it was just almost short of, of a rocky uh, um, thing because for myself, I mean, to be knocked down and to come back and, and, and win the fight, um, it just showed the, the heart that I had to, to, to want to win in front of my hometown and, and to be called the world champion legitimately, because before that I was intern. So, you know, I mean, it's all those uh, emotions that came in, and it was just one of the best moments of my life as well, you know. David, um, what were your uh, recollections of uh, fighting Manny Pacquiao in June 2008? A blur. No, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Manny was the blur, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I, I like like I said once and I said it before, that guy was just too much for me and he was the best the better fighter that day. My game plan did not did not work. I, I thought I was gonna be stronger and be able to bully him a, li- a little bit, but um it, that was not the case. Uh he was just uh, a lot faster than I was and, and I felt very confident just because of the simple reason that I I felt that I had I had fought uh, fast opponents before. Um, I, I beat Zev Judah in the amateurs, which is uh, a fast fighter. You know, uh, I, I fought uh, a lot of other guys that were that were just as fat, fast. But I mean, this was just a whole a whole different speed I had never seen before. And you know, it, it's it's part of the of the process of this of uh, of this beautiful sport of the boxing game. I tell everybody all the time there's there's three outcomes of these fights, you know. Um there's there's you win, you lose or or, or you get put down, you know. It's just it's just part of it, you know. And um like I said, at the time I I at the time and now I still take off my hat to him. He was a better fighter. Um and his game plan was better than mine and 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 he ended up winning and you 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 know, look what he went to do afterwards. So I didn't feel too bad afterwards. <laughs> well, after that fight, you had a longer-than-normal layoff. Um, you came back, you beat a very tough Jesus Chavez. Was there any mm. kind of mental block after the loss to Pacquiao? No, no mental block whatsoever, man. That's just part of it. No, no, nothing to be afraid of or or, or um, um, think about anything like that. My mindset has always been go forward and, and throw punches, and, and I feel that I that I did that throughout my career. Um, there was no mental blockage, no nothing. I I still enjoyed the sport at that time, and um, I, I still loved it. I still loved the working out, and we ended up uh, putting on a little win streak and ended up you know fighting again. 
David, um, you got another um, title chance against Humberto uh, Soto in uh, March 2010, um, but lost. Did you consider retiring at that point? <laughs> You've been on my mind, man. Yes, I, I did. I had, um, at that time in, in my life, I, I um, through the fight with Humberto Soto, I seen a lot of openings that I could have took advantage, but I just, I wasn't able to commit to it like I used to. Um, I was second-guessing my speed, my range, my power, and um, I, I think um, that's what um, afterwards I, I, I told myself, you know, maybe this is it. I even told my coach, maybe this is it, you know. And, you know, they talked to me. They're like, you know what, it's still too early, you know, um, take a couple months off, come back and see what happens. See how you feel in the gym. So I did that, and we ended up, Going at it again, you know, uh, we've, I started feeling good. I started um, feeling confident that, that maybe maybe I had a couple of years left in, in the tank. And um, you know what happened after that. <laughs> yeah, your final fight was against a tough young fighter by the name of Hank Lundy. You knocked him down early, but he eventually lost the fight. Um, yeah. What pushed you to retire after that fight? That, that fight... Um, Actually, what pushed me was uh, I, I said to myself, I want a rematch right away. I wanted a rematch. And I was sitting there in the, in, in the locker room in the couch, and, and then I just had my head down. I was like, I got to get a rematch. I'm going to get a rematch. I'm going to get a rematch. And then I was like, all right, so we got to start working out. We got to start running. We got to start watching our weight. And I was like, oh, man, I don't think I'm ready to do that again. You know, so I think – my work ethic and, and, and my sacrificing, I had, I had come to a, to a conclusion with it or, or to, to, to a point where I was like, man, this is becoming work. And I loved boxing. that I didn't want to hate it. So I ended up deciding later on, a couple of months later, I, I ended up telling my wife, um, you know what, babe, I, I, think, I think I'm going to retire. And she was very happy, obviously, because of, you know, obviously the fights and the losses and the punches and stuff. She never wanted to see that. She, you know, so she ended up actually uh, taking a, a picture of me when I was um, in the dressing room and, and it showed me just, you know, with my head down and then just thinking about, man, I got to do this all. You know, I, I told her, you know, that's the time where I started thinking and saying, you know, maybe this is the time to, to call it a day. I can, I can communicate well with people. I, I still have my wits. <laughs> I, 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 have, I carry a good conversation with people. And, um, you know, it, it, I, I gave this sport uh, a lot of my years. I sacrificed a couple of things and to, to achieve what I, what I had what I was able to achieve, and, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm content with my career. Um, I reached a lot of milestones that I honestly never thought I would, honestly, to be honest. And I'm actually happy at retirement now, and um, I can eat anything I want. I can have my cigar. I can have a couple of beers and, you know, and not feel guilty about it. <laughs> Hey, if you can't drink beer if you're boxing? Uh, you know, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't drink beer. Um, you know, I'm glad I played different sports then, David. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I, I should have became a hockey player or a baseball player, you know? Well, I can't ice skate, so that's not what I did. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, David, I'm just a uh, great, great answer. Um, just curious, how, how would you like fans to remember your career? That I always, I always came there to give them a great fight, you know. I mean, and and to be honest, honest with you, when when I walk around Chicago, and and, and people see me and they talk to me, they're like, "Man, David, you hard, you fought your heart out," and that's exactly what I want them to know that I went out there to to perform for them. And, I mean, I'm not no musician or anything like that, but we went to go out there to win, obviously, for ourselves because that's going to get us 
a uh, better payday, more recognition, and, and, and more fights. But the thing that happens is that people come out uh, out of the um, – when you are um, – in, in, the, in the stands with the people, they're like, man, great fight, David. Man, you gave it your all. Or even even in my defeats, they're like, man, you fought, you fought your heart out with Pacquiao, with uh, Humberto Soto, and, and with Lundy. It just didn't work out. And I'm like, hey, you know what? It's part of the process, man. It's part of uh, things that happen in boxing, you know. And I'm happy with. Uh, my, the feedback I get from people, and especially just the other day that we, uh, you said that we got um, nominated, I mean, into the Illinois Boxing Hall of Fame, the messages that I received and, 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 and the love that, I, that I, uh, I received from the fans and from everybody, um, it, just, it just made it more um, real that, that what I did was give them my all and they responded back with great, great um, comments. And, and, and even when to this day when I go out and, and meet people, they're like, man, you, thank you so much for, for the fight you gave us. And, and it makes me feel happy. Well, and, and the thing is, we talked about that earlier. You just spoke about it a little bit. You just recently got elected to the Illinois Boxing Hall of Fame. You talked about what it meant to the fans and your relationship with the fans. What does it mean to your family? Oh man, I I, I I mentioned it to my dad, um, and my dad's the one that got me involved, guys, at the young age of eight. And um, he uh, he looked at me with a big smile and he says, "Wow, get out of here! We did it." I was like, "Yeah, pops, we did it, man. All that sacrifice, all that hard work, we're doing it. You know, I mean, this is one stepping stone. Maybe some other things will come down the line. Maybe." Someday we get to Casa Nostra, you know, and, and, and we get into the Boxing Hall of Fame, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's an awesome feeling. It's an awesome feeling. David, um, what are you doing nowadays? Right now I actually run a boxing program in Cicero, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Uh, it's 15 minutes outside of Chicago, and um, – uh, it's, a, it's a boxing program that, that we've been running for like two years that has been going phenomenal. Um, I've got like about four kids that actively box in, 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 in tournaments and that I take out to go fight in, in Chicago. And one of them is like, yeah, you can see something special in, in that kid. And um, he's uh, doing pretty good for himself. He's, right now he's got eight fights, uh, I, I believe, with one loss only. And um, he fought, ended up fighting, obviously, a, a more experienced fighter. But we told him, hey, it's part of it. you got to sometimes fight guys that are better than you so you can become better. And um, doing that and also uh, real estate. Uh, we uh, caught the real estate bug. been doing that for the last uh, nine months. And, and I can't, can't complain. It's going pretty good. Awesome. Well, how has your career as a boxer helped you with life afterwards? And what are the most important life lessons you've learned from your time in the ring? Well, like I was telling the kids today, I was making them go go through a, a, a tough a tough workout, you know, that, that I told them, hey, listen, you know what? This is going to be like life. You're going to feel that everything's against you, that you can't do it anymore, that you can't do that one more push-up, you can't do five sit-ups, you can't do 10 more jumping jacks, but your coach is asking you to do that, which means that you got to go out there and do it so that in life you are able to uh, tackle anything that seems hard, hard to you and be able to compete against it and win. So my fighting was a, a, direct, a direct correlation with, with life. You know, you're going to have your, your, your bumps and bruises along the road, which is your training and, and, and doing all, all of that. But you will end up victorious if you keep at it, you know. Not everything is done overnight. Everything takes time. And boxing has taught me to be patient. Um, it took me 10 years to become a, uh, an Olympian. It took me another 10 to become a world champion. And if it has taught me anything, it has taught me to be patient. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll come to whatever it is that I'm working at. David, great answer. Um, 
for the fans out there, what don't we know about the life of a boxer that we would be surprised by? Oh man, then I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm just a regular guy. You know, I mean, I'm honestly just, you know, my wife makes me go buy groceries sometimes. I I, I gotta throw out the garbage. Sometimes I help her clean around the house. I definitely do dishes, man. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Um, but it, I, just the normal normal person's life, man. Uh, and that's it. I mean, I take my kids out um, to baseball practice. I enjoy time with my kids and enjoy, enjoy time with my wife. My wife actually um, is, is is what has what I I believe she's been like the backbone of our family during my boxing career because she took um, care of of my boys and and myself and. I owe her a lot um, for my career. My success has been uh, actually she was part of it. Yeah, that's why you got to do the dishes, David. That's it. <laughs> I hate folding laundry myself, but I can handle the dishes. But I just hate to fold yeah, laundry. You know, she, I didn't want to say it, but yeah, she has me folding laundry too, man. Oh, I hate that. I don't mind throwing it in and washing it and then throwing it oh, in the dryer. That's, that's the easiest part, man. You I know. know. That's why I like that. But then you got to fold it. I know. That's why and I see me. It. I'm a guy, so I don't want to do like ten loads. So I'll throw like too much in the one load. <laughs> I have to dry it twice to get it dried, and then I take it out and I think, damn, this is going to take me like twenty five minutes to fold this. I, I, I didn't realize the other time, the other day, I put in blacks with whites, and it, it, it doesn't, your whites don't come out as white. <laughs> so oh, you know the bad thing? My wife is used to me doing it. The thing that worries me is I got a 15-year-old boy, and uh, I guess one of his shirts that he just got that was kind of red, a dress shirt, I guess uh, I put it in with whites or something. Yeah. And it leaked off, or like some tan pants, and it leaks off onto his, and he sit there and yelled at me. I thought I had yeah. a daughter again. My daughter left the house. I mean, she's like 22, but it's like I got another daughter now since he wants to look pretty for all the girls at the high school, so. I was, I was yeah. I wasn't blessed to have a, a, a daughter, so I, I, I won't, I have three boys. Three boys, uh, 10, 10, uh, 8, and 6. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Dave, you're not missing much with the daughter thing because once they turn about 13 or 14, it's nothing but a pain in the ass. <laughs> it is, seriously. I mean, boys are a little bit of a pain, especially because I got like a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old, so they want to fight all the time. So it's like uh, pay-per-view night here at least for 10 minutes every day. But <laughs> with the daughter thing, it's a pain in the ass, David. You, you didn't miss anything on that one. I mean, like I said, it's awesome until they're 12 or 13 or daddy's little girl. But once man. they get 13, they don't want to have anything to do with it anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> until they get to be like 20 and realize everything you told them before was right. True, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, how would you, because you talked before, I mean, I am coach professional football, my boys, um, they play football, or my oldest boy now plays high school football. Kind of freaks me out. How would right. you feel or react, or do your boys come to you and say they want to be a boxer? Well, you know what? The funny thing is that my my the middle kid um, Elias, the eight year old, uh, when he was six two years ago, he uh, he wanted to do it because because I would come back home and I would always mention oh my my little guys, my six year olds. So I don't know, I guess he got jealous or whatever, and he ended up one day telling me, hey, Pops, I want to go fight your little guys, your 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 little guys. I'm like, you really do? I'm like, come on, let's go. So I took him, he did three rounds, did awesome. So I said, okay, he, he's going to be good. Let me let me send him to my friend, have him spar over there. He sparred over there, and he did great. Then we brought him back on Saturday, he sparred again, and he did really good. But after that, he has never said it anymore. He he wants to box, so I don't know. I don't know what it is. We'll see what happens down the line if they ended up telling me, "Hey, you know what? I want to box." And I, I would I want them to? No, you know I want them to achieve greatness in other areas. That is not just about boxing. Um, I, I want them to go to school. I want them to go to college. Uh, I want them to be baseball players or soccer ball players. Um, I want them to try other things that I couldn't try. And they could probably be great at that because um, 
Um, my kids, when, um, about two years ago, I had them in taekwondo. They ended up going uh, in, to the nationals in, uh, in just their first year. You know, they didn't, they didn't win it, but I told them, hey, you guys made it faster than I did. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, Dave, um, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I should call you David. I go by Dave. It gets confusing yeah, sometimes. That's okay. <laughs> um, what fighters do you like today? Who are your favorite fighters now? You know what? Golovkin is obviously one, one, one of the top ones that, that, that I like. Um, Koto is still surprising me the way he's fighting, you know, at, at the age he is. Um, uh, Canelo, he's okay. He's okay. I still, I'm still not sold convi- uh, convincingly on him. And Danny Garcia was one guy that, that I thought was going to be be the guy, but then when he fought that, that, that kid Herrera, I was uh, a little disappointed, you know. I was a little disappointed. But, you know, like, again, I still gave him the benefit of the doubt because that's how boxing is. You may never know who you're going to fight and who's going to make you look a little bad. But um, at, at the time right now, th- those would be my guys. Those would be, like, the guys that, that, I, like, that I like watching. So you brought them both up. What's your opinion on Cotto against Canelo? Uh, it's going to be a good fight. I mean, this is going to be um, a fight where I feel that uh, Cotto has his chance in the in the first rounds and in the early rounds, um, and uh, Canelo might might pull it out at the at the end. Though, I think Canelo might do it at the end. I just I just feel that uh, Cotto's a little a little over the hill per se. For 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 the young guy, so um, not to bash on the old guys, but you know what I mean they 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 are making a lot of noise. But I, I don't know. I just see Canelo in in the later rounds winning decision, no knockout. I don't think yeah, he'd be you, able to knock. Would you give Canelo a chance against Golovkin? I don't know. No, I don't think so, bro. No, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not at all. Either, either of them guys, either of them guys, I, I don't think uh, Golovkin, the way he fights, uh, he, he's a strong fighter and, and a pressure fighter, so I don't know. I, I, I don't give him them a chance. Yeah, the only guy I see giving him trouble would be if he moves up and fights Andre Ward. Exactly, and because of uh, Ward's boxing ability, you know. Yeah, Ward's a great boxer, but he has been off for a while too, so. Sure. But, Will, um, we're about out of time. It really, it was an honor to have you on and talk to you, David, and I really congratulate you to the utmost on your induction into the Illinois Boxing Hall of Fame. Um, you can come back on this show whenever you want, sir. Thank you very much, and the honor was all mine, guys. Um, hey, you guys Dave, you got anything else? Just, uh, uh, great to talk to you, David. And, um, by the way, um, you know, for all the vertically challenged people in the world, I'm right there with you. You're not the shortest guy in the world. Yeah, Dave's like four foot six. <laughs> no, he's not. I'm actually, I am. Yeah, I'm actually five six. So I think we're, we're the same height. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I always said I was five six, but I, I was actually an inch shorter. <laughs> oh, you should have said you were an inch taller, so you could have been taller than Dave. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, I always tell people I'm five six in heels. They just never asked me, you know, if it was a latch or heels. Well, that would make you like Caitlyn Jenner then, if you were in heels. Oh no, no, no! Sir. <laughs> not go there, no, sir. Well, we got to be okay with that, though. So don't worry men, about it. <laughs> men, 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 men heels. You know the boots. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you didn't say men heels, so and I've never heard boots called men heels. But all right, I'll let it slide this time, David. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, hey, thanks for calling in, David. Thank you guys for having me on. It was a pleasure. Oh, uh, pleasure was all ours. All right, have a good one. You too. Thanks a lot, David. Yeah. Have a thanks. Bye. All right, Dave Sadursky, do you have any closing comments? Um, it was uh, you know, it was great to talk to to David tonight. And, um, you know, hear about his career and, um, you know, great time on the show. Yeah, I mean, the thing is this. The way he wanted to be remembered by fans is the way I remember him. 
He was a guy that always gave everything he had. I think he was a very underrated fighter. I mean, his fight with Morales, I watched that again today because I hadn't seen it since the night I watched it live. And, I mean, that was a give-and-take battle. I mean, he's fighting a legend, and he got the best of him in a close fight. Um, the fight with Pacquiao, I actually thought he was going to beat Pacquiao. I didn't realize just how good Pacquiao was at that time, and I thought David would be too big for him. But, I mean, you're looking at a man that made the Olympic team. He was the WBC lightweight champion of the world. He's been inducted into the Illinois Boxing Hall of Fame. And, I mean, just like you said, I mean, I could see him making it to the International Boxing Hall of Fame. I mean, career-wise... Yeah. I mean, he's got a win over Morales. I mean, does Gotti have a win that good? And he's in the Hall of Fame. Exactly, exactly. And a really, you know, a really nice guy and a really inspirational story. Yeah, great guy. I mean, we wish him all the best, and I would like to have him on again someday. Awesome, awesome. But hey, remember, you're listening to the Grueling Truth on NGSC Sports, brought to you by Gridiron Mo, the new interactive football app. Make sure you check it out at www.gridarnmo.com. Um, tomorrow night, we will have San Francisco 49ers weekly show with host Matt Andrew Scavage and his co-host, former 49er great Dexter Carter. Um, then also tomorrow night, me and Matt will come back with our baseball show with former Major League All-Star, Major League Baseball pitcher Mike Lucas. Uh, Mike pitched for the San Francisco Giants, the Cincinnati Reds, pitched in a 1979 All-Star game, couple World Series. And then Thursday night, we'll have former Viking Charger legend offensive guard Ed White, who played in all four Super Bowls the Vikings were in, um, played in the Mud Bowl game with the Vikings, the Hail Mary game with the Vikings against the Cowboys. Then, to top that all off, he goes to San Diego, you know, with Dan Fouts, Don Coriel, all those guys and plays in maybe the greatest football game ever played, the 81 ASC Divisional Playoff, double overtime win against Miami. Follows that up by the next week playing the coldest game in NFL history against the Cincinnati Bengals in 1981 ASC Championship game. And if you've listened before, you know that's my favorite game in history. It's one time my team won a playoff game. So, hey, make sure you check us out. You can follow us at NGSCSports.com on Twitter. You can follow me at RiverMonster11 on Twitter. Dave still is 30 years behind the time and has no Twitter. Dave, your assignment <laughs> next week is to have a Twitter. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes, I have my assignment. You can check Dave out on RingsideReports.com or RingsideReport.com, or RingsideReports.com Dave? RingsideReport.com and uh, Mythical Boxing on Facebook. And Mythical Boxing on Facebook. So make sure you tune in tomorrow night, Mike Lacoste, San Francisco 49er weekly show. Uh, for Mike Goodpastor, Dave Sidersky, you're listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legend speaks.